Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from the Noble Frugal Studio, and today I'm going to show you how to take an existing animation from your library and complete it by adding a few simple elements. Let's get started. Look, I got mad respect for Torbox Tech. Accelerate your process, you're all set. It's got a haptic reaction to pulses and Bluetooth connection. It responds to the knobs and the diodes. I like those. It's tough, so I take it anywhere I might go. And trust me, it fits nice and just right for my grip. It's designed to make time fly and it ain't slow moving. Speeding up the flow, irresistible. Minutes go configure in the modes. Isn't difficult. Watch me now whipping videos up. I run the whole show down on the control. My hand recalls the keystrokes I don't know how it do, but it's dope I don't groan, no need to postpone on the console I'm just free to make moves and I'm all set I got the controller, quick as a whip in a minute you finish with your work Lift off with your thoughts in your palm Meet your new best friend, it's the tour box All set, I got the controller, quick as a whip Tic tac and save your work Lift off with your thoughts in your palm Meet your new best friend, it's the tour box I have the tour box Elite set up with open tunes so I can scroll through my tools using the tour menu. I can switch the mode of the tools that I'm using and I can scroll through the frames of my drawings. If you guys would like to see a tutorial on how you can set up the tour box just like this, then let me know in the comments below. I think the fact that you could set up your own right click menus for whatever program you want to is just insane. So huge thank you to Torbox and let's get started. So today I'm looking to finish this animation here that I started in my previous video. So let's take a look at the animation to see what we can do to finalize this project. Now the animation looks good, but the whole canvas seems a bit empty. There's a lot of space that we could be using. Also the animation itself is stylized and um, looks pretty good, but it's also a little bit boring. So there's definitely something we can do to sell this chibi walking animation a little better. Beyond that, I'd like to add a little bit of shading, maybe on the eyes, a little bit in the ear, not too much, and then some effects. Also, I think to fill in this all this white space, we could probably add a little bit of a background. So I think I'll start by adding some squash and stretch to this animation, just to give it a little more oomph, a little more appeal. That's the haptic feedback of the Torbox Elite. Sounds pretty cool. I like that one. Cool, anyway, <laughs> back to the point. So I think I'm just gonna add some squash and stretch via some extremes. So what I'm gonna do is right before each frame, I'm gonna add an extreme where the frame is stretched or squashed a little bit. So coming up on this passing position, I wanna stretch the body so it's really tall and then it settles, then it settles down here. I'm gonna go to the frame right before our passing position. I'm gonna hit my Tour menu. Let's go to new drawing. We need to click here. Tour menu drawing. I'm gonna grab this. Hit select. Select this entire. See the right click menu is right here. So I'm gonna hit copy right here. Go back a frame. Right click menu. Hit paste. And that is so cool, man. That is so cool. I got all these menus that I set up. I got tools. I got new drawing level, duplicate, all that stuff, and I got my own right-click menu and a transport menu. You can create as many of these as you want for every button, that's that's super cool. So I'm gonna turn this onion skin on. Oh, that's another key I need to set to a button is onion skin. Let's select this entire drawing. I'm just gonna stretch this up like so, and then I'm gonna make it skinnier. Place him right where he was. So now when we come up on this, he bounces. So it's a bit aggressive. You can definitely tone it down. So let's uh, go ahead and stop that. That's a bit too much. Let's go back. Select it again. We'll just drag it up a little skinnier. Stretching it like so. Just a little bit of bounce. That looks good. It makes the character look very very cartoony so let's um, let's pause this and then we'll go ahead and do that for the rest of the frames so on number four he's coming down so I'm actually gonna squash him instead of stretching him all right that looks good definitely added some more excitement to this um, animation looks a little more energetic and alive so that's what I wanted okay we'll go ahead and stop this now what is next on the list well 
there's still a lot of white space in this canvas. And I'd really like there to be a background to accompany our character. Today, I don't really wanna draw an entire background that will fill in the entire canvas. I think a way I can save time is by drawing a background, animating it so it loops with him walking, but then cropping it inside of a, some sort of shape, probably a circle. So let's see how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit Control S to save. Always save in OpenTunes, guys. Always save. So I'm gonna go to my new menu and I'm gonna go to new Tunes raster level. That looks good to me. Hit OK. I'm gonna drag this under our characters. I'm gonna name this BG for background. I'm gonna go to the character layer. I'm gonna go to my tools. Go to the animate tool. And I'm just going to drag him to the left a little bit. So he's right in the middle. Now I'm thinking that there could be like a railing behind him. Like so. Something like this. And then you can see like in the distance, you can see like the sun or something. The sunset and maybe some water. I'm gonna go to my tools. I'm gonna go hit this shape tool. Let's go to line. So rulers are on. So let's click right here to add a straight line. Probably gonna want the gate to be right here and then probably end right there. And he's walking on the sidewalk. use rectangles for this part now that I realize it. Oh yeah, that works out just fine. Okay, I'm not gonna close this off because I wanna find a way that we can make this background move and also loop at the same time. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing is duplicating this and then have them have this one move to the right and then a duplicate of it is offset and also moving to the right and ends up in the same first position. That'll give the illusion that um, it's repeating. So let's just give this some color first. Let's go to my tools. I'm gonna hit my paintbrush. I'm gonna add a new color. Just kind of bluish steel gray. Select my second color, fill that in, fill these in. Now let's get a color for the sidewalk. I'm gonna drag the exposure of this background to the end of this animation. Let's see what our, how our character's doing. Okay, so he's not quite on the ground, so I'm just gonna go on the background, select the animate tool, I'm gonna click this Y and put it up maybe 20. Let's try 75. <laughs> All right, so let's, I'm gonna mark the ends of this background, sort of right there. I'm gonna grab the animate tool. So I'm clicking on this last frame of the loop. Holding shift and open tunes with the animate tool will allow you to drag something up and down or side to side without any diagonal movement. So let's move this to the end here. I actually forgot to set a keyframe for the first one. So I'm gonna hit global key right here. Let's go ahead and set this global key. So we'll drag this up. So I'm gonna go over here and we'll drag this to the end. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate this. Hit the background layer, hit copy, hit it again and hit paste. There you go. Now these keyframes are gonna be different. So this is our background this is our two. So we can sell the loop. Let's go to this first keyframe. Well, first of all, let's eliminate this last keyframe. Delete that. And for the first keyframe, hold shift, and we're gonna go like this. I don't know why that's under there. Hold on, what's going on? Oh, I might've made a line slightly diagonal. Oops, let's go to the end here. And it has to meet up right there. Right there. All right, you see it loops. Turn this onion skin off. <laughs> I better get rid of these lines. Look, the perspective is all is all messed up. Oh, check out these edits are mirroring each other. That's cool. So when I erase here, see that? That's cool. I guess it's because we copied the column, so it's still linked as the same column to OpenTunes. That's pretty cool. Okay, next I'm gonna add another background element. This is gonna be the far background. So I'm going to, let's see, let's go to new. Let's hit Tunes raster level. Sounds good to me. Let's drag this all the way below. Like so, 
And I want to make a circle that is within these borders we set out for our background. Now let's so let's go to the shape tool. Hit circle. This X right here is the exact middle of the canvas, so I'll use that. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna change this to the color of the sky. Let's make it this very bright. Well, maybe we'll make it orange like it's evening time. Just to add some contrast. Paint bucket. Normal. Let's fill that in. Set it to areas. Let's fill that in. All right, at this point, I want to add some effects. So I'm going to go to animation. And basically, the effect I want to add is that I want this background to only show up within the boundaries of this circle. So I'm going to just name this column circle. I'm going to switch this to the effects schematic. I'm going to click on background, insert effects, matte, matte in, make the circle the matte. There we go. Now let's add the same thing for our other background. Let's go to matte, matte in. Click this arrow and drag it up to matte. There we go. Now let's see if it, when we play this animation, we gotta make the circle last the whole time, like that. Yeah, looks like it loops. That is so cool. All right, so now our animation is only within this circle. Now I'm gonna go above this circle and we're gonna add, I'm gonna just put this on a separate layer. Let's go to new level and we'll make it a tunes raster layer. Just gonna go ahead and add some water. I'm not really too worried about the color choice right now. I'm just trying to get everything down because the good thing about open tunes is you can always choose colors later. Change colors later is what I mean. So right in the middle of this composition, I'm gonna add some water. I'm gonna go to animation name this name this water make the water hit a mat in go into this circle there we go okay watching that looks pretty good it looks like we have all the elements of our animation together now before we go into adding some shade i'm just going to go ahead and finalize all these colors all right i think these colors will do for now i decided to make this uh, sort of a bright sunny day. It's sort of my favorite type of environment to take a walk in, so why not? So let's go on to add some lights and shadows. So I'm gonna go to animation, right click, add effects, light, we're gonna light spot, here we go. I'm gonna add a glow onto this light spot. Set this maybe just above the water. On the light spot, I'm gonna make this a warm, orange color. Oh, that's very interesting. So I actually just put the matte in effect on the light and not on the glow. And then I put the glow after and I got this very interesting shadow effect. That's unexpected and it looks great. So I'm going to keep it. Sometimes guys, you just get stuff for free. Now let's add some shading to the character. I got to think about how I'm going to do this. Well, the easiest way I discussed in an earlier video, I'm just going to use a multiply layer to shade this entire character. So it actually makes the whole process a lot easier. I'm gonna take the color of the ambient light of the scene, which is sort of like a blue sky color. I'm just gonna cover my character in that color. Reduce the alpha like that. Then I'm gonna take the color of the sun and I'm gonna draw in where I want the light to be. Let's make sure this is completely visible. All right, so let's take these shadows, matte in, the matte being our character. That's what we want. And then after that, let's just give him a multiply layer. Um, let's just put a glow on the end of this um, shadow chain. And if you want to learn how to do this, I have a whole video on it. Just take a look at the card above. First of all, let's take this blur off of this glow. Maybe a little bit of blur. I'm going to make sure that the shadows don't affect the line work. So I'm going to go on this string from final leading to the matte in of this shadows effect. Go to insert effect, tunes level, palette filter. Just want it to show up on one. So only filter out the first one and there we go. This up here, but then we're just gonna lower that glow intensity. This down to 25.
Okay, actually I don't want this color showing on this his hair and shirt color either. So I'm gonna put a seven. So we can put seven there. There we go. So I'll just make some lighting for background one and then I'll duplicate it and have it move along with um, the rest. Okay guys, with a little bit of that lighting done, that is it. So as you guys can see, if you just add a few more elements, such as a background, maybe some effects and lighting, you can bring quite a lot of polish to your already finished animation. All right, since this is done, let's go ahead and export it. So we're gonna go to, actually gonna go to X sheet first and go to scene settings. I'm gonna set the background color to alpha by dragging this slider all the way down. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to render, go to output settings. I'll put this as a GIF file. Settings, I'm gonna check looping. Scale should be 100. So I'm gonna make sure my st frame start is one and my end frame is 24. That looks good, now I'm gonna hit render. All right, now I'm going to go to local disk, open tune stuff, projects, tutorials, outputs, and here it is. And that is how you finish an animation. So I wanna say a huge thank you to you guys for watching. Thank you to Torbox Tech for sending over the Torbox Elite here for us to use during this video. This thing has some pretty cool software you can use to speed up your workflow. I also wanna say a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. You guys really make this work possible. Thank you for supporting me over the years. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a like. And with that said, I will see you guys next time. Happy animating.